The topic for today is to hire or not to hire. And we're going to start off with the first social dilemma, which is you are the owner of a company. One of your biggest bullies from school applies for a job at your company. They have met the qualifications and has the experience. Do you hire him or her or not? And we'll start off. I love it. Thank. Oh, yes. Ali hasn't seen this. No one's seen this. It was, a, it, it was actually, uh, let me tell you a story, Ali. Uh, it was actually a TikTok that I watched that was 30 seconds and I loved the story. And then they said, if you want to see more, go to, your, go to my Instagram. So I went to the Instagram and the Instagram was one minute. And then they took me to their YouTube. Talk about a sales funnel in 2021. I had to go to three places <laughs> just to find, uh, to watch the full video. And I thought, you know what? This is awesome for a social dilemma. So let's start off with the person in the hot seat. And it goes to Peachy Nana. Hello, Peachy Nana. You have the opportunity to speak or pass. Do you hire them or not? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Am I doing something wrong? No, you're not. Speaking is you. speaking is the right thing to do here. <laughs> Nana. Louis, uh, Ali will be giving graciously giving you the megaphone, and then we Let would love to hear Let me try one more time. I don't know what happened. Yes. There we go. Okay. Okay. Can you hear now? Yes. Yes, we can. Good. So I'm going to say hire him or her because people change. They're daft when they're at school, and they change. So yeah, hire them if they. If they're good and they're better than anyone else. Excellent. Thank you, Peachy. That's all I've got to say. I can't wait for the day on Old Space where I can have my poll and uh, I can put the question and, and you can say yes or no and everybody can vote. And then I'll reveal the answer at the end. That would be so awesome. What do you think, Ali? Yeah, I think we need to upgrade to polls. It would be really interesting. Yeah. All right. Let's yeah. go to Max the dog. Hello. That depends on a lot of variables because, like Peachy said, if they're the best qualified person and have the best experience, then it would be kind of a yeah. But what you do know about them from prior is if they're a bully, they probably don't do very well in a social environment. You don't want to be hiring disruptive people who are going to turn your workplace into high school, the worst parts of high school. Mm. So generally speaking, I would say if they're just basically meeting qualifications and experience, but you have other options who are equal. No, no. Why would you hire someone who's going to be disruptive and bring up the past? So, nah, nah. All right. That's my opinion, at All least. All right. Awesome, Max the dog. I guess Fair it also, enough. I guess it also depends on what age were you bullied and what were their, their frame of mind and how they're feeling now because they must be pretty desperate to uh, be coming to you for a job. Dr. Sam. Good day. Uh, hi, Sam. Timon. Hi. Uh, hi, Heli. Hi, everybody. Yeah, a great, great question. And I'm sure many people are confronted with this, uh, this dilemma because it is a dilemma. Uh, look, I, I can't, I can't better uh, Peachy and, and Max. I think uh, they summed it up quite eloquently on how to handle the situation. Uh, what I would do, of course, is I would do an intensive interview and find out how many jobs this person has had in the past. Are they jumping from job to job because of a personality trait, this bullying trait? Uh, I would interrogate this person uh, in terms of their bullying tactics and remind them that they were a bully at school and have they changed in any way or do they still have that dominant or psychological uh, trait if the the it comes across that no that was just a, 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 a an issue they had at school they've grown out of that they've matured they've held responsible jobs 
Uh, I don't think revenge is sweet. I think revenge can be bitter. And in that case, I would give the person the job. Thanks, Timon and Ellie. Pleasure. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. All right. That was awesome. The guy that looks like me. Marcus. <laughs> Hi there. Hi. Hello there. How are Welcome. you guys? Good. All right. I'm not bigger than... I, I got to say, I'm not as... Uh, can, can we just swap seats guys, quickly? Uh, swap seats with me so we can see. It is kind of scary. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I want to see what I'm, I look like oh. on the on the couch. Well, yeah. I gotta I can... see this. Okay. <laughs> you can you can you can talk I now. I see a difference. <laughs> can I you hear me? I see a difference. Yeah, we can yeah, hear you. Can, can you hear me? You. All right. So mm -hmm. uh, I'm not gonna be as big as you guys. I'm gonna hire my enemy because then it's kind of like revenge, right? Now he's in my he's in my territory. And I'm going to just sit there and make his life a living hell as much. <laughs> I love Marcus. this. <laughs> uh, okay, you know, Tim, I'm just, just stay there. Marcus, come join me here. <laughs> no, uh, it's a once in a no, lifetime. Seriously, you just load him up with a lot of work and you just make his life a living hell. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's, definitely, he's definitely my alter ego, Ali. I'll tell you that much. I love it. Complete opposites. Uh, all right. Cool. That's all I got. Okay, cool. Thank you, Marcus. I, awesome. I'll, I'll, I'll just pop back I'm up on you. Thanks. That was awesome. Uh, Kristen. Yes, let's go to Kristen. Hello there. Sorry for interrupting Hi. your your uh, special session where you were. No worries. I think I just walked in on this, so I feel, uh, <coughs> I feel lost. Um. I, I kind of like what this guy was saying. Wherever he went, your alter ego. Let's give him the job and give him the crappiest job yeah. around. More than like my like, I don't know. My professional self says, does he has he changed? Has he learned anything? Maybe he had something going on when he was a kid that made him that way, and maybe he's grown. I don't know. But my really bad alter ego says, just give him the crappiest job you can. <laughs> I love this. You've set a wavelength over here, Marcus. All right. Thank you, Kristen. <laughs> Heading over Thanks. to awesome. Chris. Chris. Lackey. Lackey or Lackey. Let me give you the megaphone. Megaphone yours. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, we can. Um, I would probably hire him just simply because I believe people can change. Um, I think everybody deserves a second chance. And then if he proves me wrong, you know, he'd be on a very short leash, but if he proves me wrong, then he would be shit canned. Yeah, there, there is work probations, actually. You give, give it a couple of months. Good thinking. Thank you, Chris. And then we have Daniela Marie 91. Feel free to speak or pass. Welcome to the social dilemma. Hi. Um, so Hi. I would, if I was the owner of a company, I'm a really like nice person. I forgive everyone and stuff like that. So if it was my bully uh, from high school, I'd still hire the person just because like, They've got the qualifications to do their job. I don't bring the past up. The past is in the past for a reason. You know, I look to the future. And if that person can help build the company up, then that's great for me and it's great for everyone as around as well. So, yeah, definitely I'd hire that person. All right. Awesome. Thank you, Daniela Marie. Keith. Good day. There we go. Sorry, there's a slight delay there. Hi, guys. Hi. Um, Thank you. Yeah, when I, when I first saw this question, I was like, God, no, definitely not. You know, this, this guy's going to, as, as um, I think it was Max said, this guy's going to be toxic for the company, you know, and we don't need a toxic person dragging everyone down. But then, you know, that was the old me and the new me is kind of along the lines of, well, you know, this person's presumably had a past that's created this within them. And how are they ever going to improve if nobody you know, takes them to one side and, and shows them the error of their ways. And so if you are in a, 
in a leadership position and you're able to influence somebody because of that assumed authority that you've got then you should put it to good use so i i would hire him and then i'd try to help him if he was still a bully then i'd, I'd make him realize how it is and how he needs to change for the benefit of everybody all right awesome thank you nice. so much yeah thank you good thoughts for those of you who've just popped in hello and welcome uh, please raise your hand if you would like to answer this question uh, we are going around the table uh, or the couches rather and uh, we go in a clockwise fashion and then we open up the table for you to share your extra thoughts answers and ideas and maybe even your experiences uh, no one shared any experiences on whether they were bullied or not I don't know if that's going into sensitive territory Ali you need to kick me if I get into sensitive territory I tend to do that sometimes but uh, there's a reason why we we're at, we're at these dilemmas all right let's head over to the war uh ward hello yeah hey um i've i've done a lot of hiring uh i don't really remember much of high school i graduated a while ago so uh the bully thing just i can't remember them um but i have hired people who who were bullies uh, unknowingly uh they're bullies to employees so I, I think there's a lot of unknowns with with your question in terms of you know the impacts to to my to my business or my company i have other employees how how are how are they going to interact what's the dynamic i'm going to create with with them are they going to bring something to the team that that you know it makes it worth it or are they going to disrupt i think as other people have said uh in the past i've contacted uh employer former employees just to say hey you know not try to you know try to gauge what what kind of person I, i'm bringing into my team because because I, I sometimes look at my my employees as my family, and I don't want to, you know, destroy the company. I don't want to destroy the relationships that we have, uh, because a team that works together really well can produce like like no other. So, I, I think I think yeah, it could be a maybe. I wouldn't I wouldn't hold being a bully against him, but I would look at what what he is going to provide and bring to the team to make my my company grow, uh, to deliver you know whatever it is my company delivers. Thank all right you. awesome thank you nice great An anastasia hello good to see you again thanks hi. can you hear me yes. yes we can hi anastasia hi um uh, you know i agree with ward uh, and i would just say no and just bypass the drama but there's this little evil part of me that agrees with the other ones and says hire them and give them the crappiest job and make their life a living and let them find it out so it just depends on the mood that day okay <laughs> all right oh, good one uh last one thank you anastasia good to see you dylan hello dylan hi it's funny i actually had this experience with a girl in high school that used to bully me for being gay and then she just walked through the door and said oh my god do you work here i said yes i do and she's like i don't have a chance to. i said nope you don't and my thing is that i'm forgiving to people when i see the that they're really going to work hard and they apologize but unfortunately in this part of the world in scandinavia people don't really say sorry there's not even a real word for it in in the language and i believe that the core traits of people tend to stay the same and when I'm, I'm oversensitive, when I look at hiring at people, you know, I notice like the small things and, you know, I, I tend to take a look at that because I think here in Europe, unlike the United States, there are very strong labor laws. So when you hire someone, it's very difficult to fire them. It's, it's almost like getting married, but you know, yeah, I, I've been a jerk myself in certain instances and I really, I think relationships are a lot of work. But if someone doesn't apologize and admit what they did and are very forward about it and just acts like nothing and they can walk in there, it's like, okay, bye-bye. That's my attitude. Yeah, I find that uh, when people bully or they're homophobic or they are racist and all that, the, the times when they say sorry, they're not actually sorry. They're just embarrassed that they have to say something. Because what is it that you truly become sorry? You have to go through quite a process to change your entire way of thinking, you know, uh, through, through a proper experience. Same with murderers. You know, murderers kill and then they say sorry, 
Like, come on. Uh, they, they're not well, sorry. I think it's, a, you know, it's a lot of work. That, that's what it is. You know, I have a friend that's transsexual, and sometimes I use the word tranny, which is very offensive, and I had to apologize and educate myself about this because I think transsexuals are where gay people were 30 years ago. Yeah, and, you know, some people take it with a pinch of salt. Others don't take it sensitively because if, if you take it to heart, it means that there's you, you're still not over it. Um the pain and anguish that you went through um so i guess it's it's learning about who the the person is that you're talking to and how to talk to them and around them you know uh, and see what is acceptable because i'm sure there are many people that do like being called trannies uh i'm so i'm sure transsexuals that that go from a a man to a woman uh they still allow their children to call them dad for example you know so i don't know it's it's an interesting dilemma i think it's another idea for a social dilemma uh, because we are looking at the that level um because it, it brings more relevancy to today and the trends for today and if we look at what we've done in the last couple of weeks you know genome sequencing and uh, geo allocation and i mean it's awesome but i also like bringing the the relevancy towards these uh events as well all right let's head over to maximus comfort good to see you again uh, just going through this huge list all yours or or not okay let's let's try that again i know you spoke last time but if you if you don't want to speak then just uh let me know no 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 can you can you we can hear you give me the microphone yeah you got the okay microphone. that's good depends on the kind of work you do and what government work you go through hr you go through so many interviews and security checks that by the time they come to you and you know them personally got to put that aside mm. and you got to let them you know just they just come into your team and that's the end of it mm. it it's their performance you got six months after that it, it changes that's it True. You have to put all your personal ideas. If you do know the person from when you was a kid, yeah, things change. But if they get that far, and you meet them again, you gotta go with the flow. And just give them the six months probation. Awesome. Thank you, Maximus. Uh, for those who've just joined, yeah, feel free to raise your hand because I do want to. Uh, I mean, the time when we started this session, we didn't have too many people. So I do want to go through the rest of the list. And let's go with just going through the list quickly. Um, Halion Aeon. Good day. Okay. Yep. Hear me? Yes. Yep. Yes. Yeah, sorry, I just came in. As usual, I'm late. Sorry about that. I'm always late for yours. Um, actually, I basically, on this subject, I basically agree with the guy over there that, I mean, yes, okay, you'd be a bit wary, but I experience bullies are just teenagers or whatever growing up, and they, they're they just immature. Usually, I think they grow out of it. Um, and as he says, you've got a probationary period, and it, most people deserve a second chance. I mean, I know kids that from my school who were bullies, and they've grown up to be okay. So um, I think you probably, unless you really, you know, unless he'd stabbed you in the back a few times, so yeah. <laughs> probably give him a second chance. It's just my initial. Awesome. View. Thank you. Uh, before we go to hand raisers, Ali, what would you do? Can you hear me? Sorry. Yes. Okay. Awesome. Well, <coughs> the old me would hire would hire him and give him grief or her. Okay. But considering the fact that I've grown up and matured, I believe that thing people do change. Um, life has a weird way of humbling you and putting you through certain experiences. Also, taking into consideration why children are bullies at school um it usually has to do with the situations at home not always but um that's my belief 
and growing up, I don't know, they grow into adulthood, they seem to mature, they go through different situations, they get more humbled. So I would definitely give him the opportunity. I would probably ask a lot of questions, see if they have changed, see if they have any bully tendencies or might cause a threat to my company. That's what I would be more concerned with. Um, if I saw that they could provide value and they have changed, I would definitely hire them. And But I would definitely talk to them about it because children hurt, right? And I don't know, these type of hurts seem to stick with you sometimes. And it would be a good opportunity for healing. Anyway, so I would definitely talk about it and try to see where they're at. If I saw that they had changed and they could provide value, I could provide value in their life. And without it being a threat to my company, I would definitely put it aside and hire them. Mm. Yeah, that's what I would do. What yeah. would you do? I hope you haven't said yet. It's, yeah, it's a, it's a, it depends situation. You know, I like um, one of the guys said, there isn't a lot of information, so I'll do it to my interpretation. And that is, <clears throat> if it was a, if I had a company that employed a lot of people, that I wouldn't really have to deal with um, with the guy to uh, or girl that I hire, um, I would give it a probation of about four to five months and see how the performance is. Because he, he must be, or they must be super desperate to be wanting a job uh, from the, the from a company where the owner was the person that they bullied, right? So if I look at it in terms of my preference and personality, I don't care whether they have the qualifications and criteria because nowadays it is overlooked. What's more important is how much passion and how, how, how much your personality meshes with the person that you're going to be working with. Because when you hire people, you're not just hiring another person on earth. You're hiring a person that you're going to be seeing longer than you spend time with your spouse, with your partner, with your mother, with your father. All right, so I'm talking about a small now company of where you constantly talking, interacting. Uh, you you got to, you know, uh, get used to how they live, what they eat. It's your family. So I have met one of my bullies. Awesome. Um, complete change because who we were when we were younger is not who we are today. Uh, if you strive to change and strive to do better, because there are reasons why the, the person was a bully to begin with. And like Ali said, it might be based on your upbringing, how you were treated, what you thought was right. And the, the ego and selfish side of you was so high that it, you, you lost the empathy side to life. And I think that is a, an important aspect to take into account is that we are not who we were. We are not who we will be. We are who we are now and we are working at who we want to be in the future. So, yeah, I'm, I'm all right with hiring them if there is a mesh between personalities. I've spoken way too much. Feel free to raise your hand and share your thoughts on... Uh, if you would hire them or not. Let's go to Max the dog. Yeah. Um, if it's your company and you're the one in charge, I suppose you can take a chance and see if someone has changed. But my own personal experience, when I meet people that I knew from high school 30 some odd years ago, most of them have not changed. There is something strange about a lot of people that when they're with those other people that they knew when they were children, they suddenly revert back to their old childish ways. Um, that goes for bullies and that goes for the bullied. You see people who emerged out of their shell in other way in all other aspects of life suddenly go back into their shell when they're around a bully. And I mean, for example, a few years back, we had a kind of a minor high school – one of one of our high school friends was in a band and he just went on Facebook and invited like a hundred different people he knew from high school to come see his band play. And we all showed up. That was the problem. We all showed up. 
there were the bullies there, there were the bullied, and there was the you know the the rest of everyone else. And sure enough, the bullies acted exactly the way they did before in high school. People don't change as much as you think. But if you are hiring to represent a company that is not yours, your obligation is not to better the person that you're looking to hire. Your obligation is to the employer, the job. You're hiring for their benefit, not your own, not the potential employees. You have an obligation there. Um, I mean, that's just my personal opinion. I mean, it's if you want to take a chance on someone and it's a big company and you they can work somewhere away. Fine. People do change. My personal most people do not. Oh, we lost you there. And Max. we lost you. Yeah, sorry. But I think we got the gist of what uh, what you were saying. Uh, you'll pop back in. Keith, hello. Hi again. So I was thinking as well, just on the thoughts that we've just shared there, and I think it very much depends on the job, on the actual role as well. So, you know, we all have different personality traits. And so, for example, if you were looking to hire a manager, you would want someone who's quite assertive, um, an element of you know trait assertiveness within their personality. You don't want to be bullied, for example, um, being the manager because people will literally walk over that person, won't follow the instructions, will take advantage. So, you know, children that start off as bullies in high school, you know, do go on to, to make good salespeople, good managers, good leaders. Um, not always, because again, it depends on on their style uh, and what they bring. But you definitely want someone who's assertive. In a, in a managerial role. Um, whereas if you were hiring someone who was in the capacity of being more caring and nurturing, well, of course, you wouldn't want someone who, you know, had too much great assertiveness. So yeah, it only depends on the role yeah. you're recruiting for. All right, awesome. Thank you so much. Um, before we go to the next hand raise, Ali, do you think I can tell them uh, that that video that I watched with the bully? <clears throat> Definitely. I'm interested. I'm very curious. Are you, are you interested? It's a very short story, but I think it's very relevant to today. Just uh, give give some emojis or not, and then uh, I'll be happy to not or, or, or say the story. All right. Thank you. So uh, it's a very short story. This guy goes into a restaurant. He's a, in a managerial position. He's wearing the suit and he goes up to some guy in the fast food industry and his name's Larry. And he sees Larry is cooking burgers. And he says, Larry the loser, you're cooking burgers? You're still a loser. I can't believe it. I've got to take a photo of this. So he takes a photo. And I'm making it very short. All right. I'm a short storyteller. He takes a photo of Larry the loser and says, look, Larry's still a loser. He's cooking burgers. He then tells Larry that, you know what? Well, he's cooking burgers. Uh, he's about to go to top management because he's about to be promoted. So he goes, um, so yeah, so Larry is just being humble and he's being himself and he's uh, saying, you know what, one day you're going to uh, look up to people that you've bullied. One day something is going to hit you. You know, when it comes to karma, and I do that in, in, in quotation marks. And... Um, so this guy, I don't know what his name is. Let's say Todd. So Todd goes to his, uh, his big building. He's got his coffee. He's walking with his suit. And he sits down, ready to be promoted. And uh, the, the owner comes up and says, we're about to promote you, but unfortunately we have to fire you. Because we see you posted on social media about some, uh, some humble worker uh, by his name is Larry, and you called him a loser while he's trying to just get by and put food on his on the table. And so this went around, and he developed the credibility of being the douchebag uh, who would still pick on his uh, his colleagues or or his um, on people that he used to bully when he was younger, and he's still bullying them. So he. He tried for months looking for positions at jobs and his reference letters were constantly the same. He picks on people. He calls uh, uh, people who are just trying to get by losers and, and nobody hires him. 
and he gets so desperate that he gets to the stage where he, after two, three months, he goes back to the same restaurant and asks Larry uh, if there is a position for him. And Larry is now uh, an owner of over a hundred of these companies and he's in a suit and he says, yes, absolutely. Uh, I'm happy to help show you how to cook burgers. And you can see how he feels that anguish and that sadness. He accepts the, the job. And obviously that was the transition that made him go from a bully to somebody completely understanding for once where someone was at a lower level. So that's where I got the dilemma from. Ali, what did you think of that story? Awesome. Like I said, life always finds a way to humble you, right? Definitely. In some way or another. Definitely. All right. So and karma. Yeah. So th th thank you for listening to that. <laughs> uh, so let's head over to Eden. Uh, you're next in line. Feel free to speak or pass. Good day and welcome. Would you hire them? Yes or no? All right, Eden's gone. Let's head over to Leo. <clears throat> yes. Hi. Hi. The Hi. dilemma's Hi. behind Hi, you. you. Feel free to speak oh, or yeah. pass. Would you hire them or not? Not. No. Reasons? No hire. Because, uh, because he probably keep the same behavior, so... And if I'm not sure he's going to be like that in the company, it's just going to be worse hiring somebody that I know it's, it's going to be bullying other people. Yeah. So I, that's, that's why. All right. Awesome. Thank you. I feel like there should be, Thank you. In, instead of that four to five months, there should be like three strikes and you're out or two strikes. Like, why would you, why would you fuck up three times? You know, so two, Two strikes and you're out. That's that's what I would do. Uh, well, if I'm allowed to, I don't know. Uh, nowadays, hiring is like setting up contracts where people can sue you for firing people. Ridiculous. You could actually warn them in the beginning and sort of give them a trial period. Yeah. Uh, somebody did say that earlier. I yes. think that would be the best option. Yeah, probation. But I'm thinking that six months is a long term of probation if they're going to be bullying the employees throughout that time, Ellie. It could be risky to give them Look, a six month probation. You asking them about their history, they I'm sure they will you will you are bound to find out um what they are like i mean considering the jobs that they've changed if they have changed a lot of jobs recently something is definitely going on there's no stability in that and definitely yeah i'd be a sign that something's not right for them all right nicole would you like to speak or pass hi uh, sorry uh, no, i'll pass Okay. We'll them, but, All know. right. Well, enjoy enjoy the event while you're here. Um, Bazinga sixty seven. Oh gosh, a name like that, I'm scared. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to speak or pass? Uh, I'll speak. Um, awesome. I mean, usually when you hire somebody, you got a ninety day probation period. I would hire them, give them that um, 90 day probation. Um, and then, you know, you can reevaluate, talk to you, his peers, you know, the other people that are working around with him. If they say he's doing good work, behaving, and everything like that, not causing trouble, you keep him. If he's bullying other people, he's not doing, he's not competent with his work, then you have a reason to fire him after the 90 days. Yeah. You just tell him, hey, you didn't meet up with your qualifications or your stand our standards, and then you just go ahead and get rid of them. Jeez, I I don't think I would be able to handle ninety days with that guy if he if he did continue his bullying. I would literally give him two well, strikes. I mean, well, if he doesn't go to the ninety days, and you can get um let him go before that. I've been at my company for ten years. I've gotten one warning. And that was early on. 
I feel like if you give 90 days and the guy's just bullying and bullying and bullying, it's it's just too much. Two strikes. I'm well, feeling I mean, it doesn't mean you have to go the whole 90 days. Yeah. I mean, if he's bullying, you can go ahead and let him go earlier. Yeah. You don't know. He may have changed. He may have changed knowing that you're the boss and he used to bully you around. Now you hear the, his, his um, supervisor. <laughs> He's not gonna bully you around anymore, and if yeah. he does, then you got you got the you can go ahead and let him go and say, "Hey, uh, it doesn't work out. It's not working out with you. Let yeah. him go." In the words of South Park, "I can change." Kids, <laughs> <laughs> Ali. All uh, right, let's, and also, yes. Once he's like, once he's in an interview, you have all the time in the world to interview him. You can bring up the past. Trigger him a little bit, you know, tease him a little bit, him, sorry, her, no, no offense to the guys here. Um, he's more than likely to slip up, right, if he's still got bullying ta tactics. I mean, you're the boss. I mean, for somebody to have their own company, they've built their way up there. They have gotten some kind of skills to be able to assess people. I mean, considering the fact that you've hired others, I mean, you are more mature now. You do... You can sort of analyze people, maybe in a slighter sense, and he will definitely slip up. Exactly, it's there a it's again. a form it's Me. a it's a form no of offense. it's a form of reverse psychology. For example, instead of exactly. instead of going into like a deep discussion about your past traumas, you can actually say something as simple as, "So you're still bullying kids nowadays?" You know, just. Just throw it see out. See how there. their reaction. Yeah, goes. see see how their reaction exactly. is. See how they talk. Maybe they'll even apologize, or they'll be like, "Geez, no, I haven't done that since primary school, or something like that, or I don't know what was wrong with me as a kid." And then it's like game over. That's all you needed to have instead of we need to discuss when you started bullying me. I, I was very hurt. You know, <laughs> just like make it lighthearted, and uh, things could turn out a lot better. All right. It's funny at this time uh, when we're near the end and people just start raising their hands. Boom, boom, boom. All right, let's head over to Cyber Vines. Hello. I can change. <laughs> Where's that troll? Who's that? Cyber Vines, uh, you raised your hand. I don't know if you would like to say anything. Okay, goodbye. Uh, Ultra Funky, hello there. Hello. Hi. Oh, I, I, I was late in today, so I haven't heard other people. It would be so interesting. I'm sure it was really, really good things. Uh, my take on this is going to be um, showing a little bit who I am. And I was thinking like this. If a person have qualifications and experience, they probably have another job already. So if they're going to move over to my company and work for me, they probably want to have their, they employ, we want to be safe with their employment in the way that it's not like I'm going to try them out for three months or 90 days, as we said, you know, they probably want to have a job directly. And that's where, where I'm going from it. And I'm thinking like this, my most important thing is to protect my, employees so if i have more people and i'm sure unsure of the person because of his history i really have to turn him down you know if i don't have the chance to uh, get to know who who he is but I, I would probably turn him down not for the things he did to me before but not being sure if i could really 100 percent trust him uh, the way he are he are today because also if you build it when you were a kid that's where when you were evolving as a person that could be really deeply rooted in your personality even if you mm. learn something i think that's something you carry with you but i'm not i'm not going to be like saying that for 100 percent. but um I, I i have been in this situation in the way that i know how important it is to protect your people that you have already employed mm. so so i would uh, i wouldn't hire the person just right. the temple as thanks because of I'll, this. I'll, I'll sum Thank up you. I'll sum up today's session ultra funky uh, yes I'll hire them no I won't hire them yes I'll hire them and make their jobs hell uh, yes I'll hire them because they've changed 
that, that sums up today, basically. <laughs> uh, and then there was my whole philosophical approach that's too long to answer. All right. With extra dressing and with saucy dressing. Saucy dressing. That was just the juice. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, like when you explain the story, you just add extra sauce on it. I don't know. We We usually express it as, we usually say it as a culture. Anyway, spicy not sauce. The vibe, yeah. yeah, spicy sauce. I would, yeah. I would say that much. All right, let's go to Sparkles. Hi. Um, again, Hi. I came in late, so I don't know if anyone's said this already. But if I was an owner of a company um, and I had this person in front of me, I would look at their qualifications. Obviously, they're meeting. The expectations so then i would sit him down and i would presuming this person remembered me i would try and get them talking about school because i wouldn't presume that this person was a bully just because there's an art they're an asshole. i would think maybe there's something a bit more behind it and then like anybody if i was if i was um interviewing anybody like anybody i would go a lot on how i felt about that person at the time I mean, if this is 20 years later, this person may have completely changed. So then if I hired them, I'd hire them on a six-month probation, mm. but I'd make it very clear that the company had a code of conduct and fairness mandate. Yeah. And that any any incidents at all or anything, you know, would be investigated straight away and it would have harsh consequences. So anyway, so that's what I do. All right. You basically echoed everything that Dr. Sam said, uh, like just from the beginning straight to the end. It's unbelievable. Thank you, Sparkles. Cyber Vines, let's try again. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yes. All right. Uh, I hate to throw a wrench into this. Uh, discussion uh, nearing the end, but we need uh, it. Uh, n <laughs> Nine times out of a ten, out of ten, uh, companies actually support the bullies, not the victims. Mm -hmm. um, you'd be amazed on how many companies will outright support um, bullying another person or uh, doing something that is either unethical or unwarranted because there's money attached to the action. And they will go out of their way to support the bully and fire the person that was being bullied. Uh, it is a growing trend, especially in the United States. It's not necessary. It's not warranted. Um, I've personally been a victim of it. Um, it's it's ridiculous. But um, the people that you know get past it and get through it, you know, live better lives and are able to you know achieve whatever they need to achieve but uh it is definitely a growing trend that mm. companies will go out of their way to bully someone um for whatever reason mm. and then at the end fire them for you know misconduct that is actually on the company side not on the other person's side sounds sounds like something in new york that you would see in the movie uh, and if, if we, if we look at it, if we look at it, it's probably based on survival of the fittest, you know, it's like, I was thinking that whoever's the strongest like the jungle, yeah, the jungle, I'm the king of the jungle. I'm the king of this iron jungle, uh, or concrete jungle. Uh, if I'm strong, I can make sales. I am cutthroat, you know? So it does make sense that the one being bullied is in their eyes, the bullied is the weaker one. Similar to how a lion will attack a weaker lion uh, to take over the pack. Very interesting. And yes, we, well, needed, we needed that ranch. Ranch? Wrench. Or that, one that's, of the weakest prey. So that's a little bit of a... Uh, um um, you know, misconsideration. It, m the majority of the time, the person being bullied is actually the stronger one. Uh, the person that's bullying is actually weak. They're, they're you know, uh, fighting something that they don't understand or they are uh, lashing out because they're afraid. Um, almost every single time that I've seen this from a psychological perspective, it is the one that's bullying is the weaker one. It's not the other person. Mm. 
um, especially in companies when it comes down to money and when it comes down to the, you know, uh, ability to thrive, a kind person, t it takes strength. Yeah. You can't, you know, you can't be a weak person and be kind at the same time. It takes strength to be kind. Yeah. And, it, and it takes strength to do the right thing because so many companies are out to, you know, falsely think that they're being cutthroat and their survival of the fittest or whatever, but it's really just a, you know, it's a ploy. They are weak, <laughs> incredibly weak. Super interesting. And we see it. This comes back to my theory. Sorry. Yes. No, Ali, go. This comes back to my theory. I mean, I'm sure a lot of other employees are witnessing this bullying. What are they doing about it? Because it's one thing that the weaker one mm. sits and takes it. And then the other ones just sit and make a big laugh about it. This mm. is one thing that always triggers me at school, out in public or with work. I mean, people just stand there and watch. They do nothing. They will see an accident on the road. Somebody will need help. Oh, what? It's just a new entertainment story. We're just driving past mm -hmm. looking at what's going on. Nobody stops to help. Why? Like we just sit and watch. So... But that's in the situation where um, people are aware of what's going on and just not to be bystanders. I mean, that's just one thing I always say. Being well, allowed mouth, if you I'm, see I'm, something, I'm never say a bystander. The thing is, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and I mean, is, if point. it's 10 if against it, one, then the 10 can pressure him and get him out of the company. Whereas if they're just sitting around making a big fuss about it, the weaker one will leave and it's a pity. Yeah, the thing they might is, be a good worker as well. Yeah most people are followers and they'll follow those that uh, they are intimidated by or they will follow those who will lead with, by an example. The pack. Yeah, yeah, lead with the pack. And even if the person isn't with the strongest trait to, um, like isn't the most intelligent, but is the most intimidating, the followers will tend to follow the, uh, the ones that they fear more. You know, because sometimes the cleverest guy in the power. room, the cleverest guy in the room is the quietest guy in the room. He's not doing anything mm -hmm. other than doing his job, but he doesn't have power over. He doesn't have social skills. He doesn't have connections with some people, you know. So, yeah. All right. Because they're so focused. I, I don't know. There's a lot of psychology within this. K okay, I have no idea how to pronounce this, but K E I C A J. You're gonna have to help me. Yeah, it's key cash. Thanks. Key cash. So really and truly the question is, can I overcome my conscious bias? Because that's really what this is at the end of the day. And I think, you know, twenty years goes by. I have to think if he's applying for your workplace, he's within the same industry. Um if you're in that industry, I would hope you've certainly made enough friends within that industry. You can you can do some background checks outside of what the individual's formal um, references are. And if those are coming up good, yes, why would I not give them a chance? Uh, again, you would need robust policies in place and you need to be willing to enforce those robust policies to make sure you have the tools to take care of it if it is an issue. And uh, you give him a, a 90 day period. Uh, obviously, if he's acting up within the 90 days, then yeah. he's gone before that 90 days comes up. All right. Awesome. Thank you so much. Ali, that concludes yes. today's social dilemma. Thank you so much for popping in. I'm going to take Already? off the toggle mute all. Yes, because I have a orange loaf cake in the oven and it's going to burn. So I need to go. So thank you very much for joining. And uh, we hope to see you at Oh My Brain and The Moral Dilemma. But you know what? You can continue the discussion. Look, we've got a full house. Uh, Ali, you can stick around if you'd like. But thank you. Oh, and sure make sure you join the VR Digital Citizens Facebook group. As for me, I am out of here. Thank you, everybody. Hope you had fun. And we lost him. Thank you all for joining us today. It was lovely seeing you guys. I'm going to stick around while Tim goes and does what he needs to. And I'm going to be unmuting everybody, giving you your voices back. And that's it. Thank you. Ali, are you...